Welcome back, guys, to Remax. <laughs> Did you just shush all of your guests? <laughs> what the? F Bring feed me back. You never shushed anybody. Wow. All right, I see how this is. Uh, welcome back to Remax, episode six, part two. Uh, this is the second part of the show. There's a lot to of, to talk about, and I'm not sure what to start with. Uh, okay, GSL round of eight. GSL round of eight. Why do you want to start with that one? I know it's in the. <sighs> what do you want to start I with? I no, like try I... the next thing. And let's oh shoot, no, no, shoot. no 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 no! Oh, I skipped something. I skipped something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. So, uh, WCS. Um, so after Kispa Cup ended, the guy from uh, the Kispa president, I think, one of the old people, they came on and they were like, "All right, we <laughs> oh need to God. fix WCS points for Pro League, and or <laughs> we need to fix Korean uh, uh, We need to fix WCS points in Korea. All right." So he came on and he talked about trying to have more tournaments in Korea for uh, WCS. And then, uh, obviously, it rustled a lot of feathers because, yeah. uh, you know, having giving points to Pro League would be unfair to everyone else. But blah, blah, blah. Okay, so let's just move on. So my, my, my Korean sources, which are basically like Korean... Community members, Korean players, Korean uh, team leaders. Oh, you have sources. Coaches and whatever, yeah. Okay. Uh, they they said it's gonna be a, there's gonna be another there's gonna be JSL and there's gonna be another tournament ran by Spot TV. So that is what is gonna be the extra WCS points as far as I know and what I've heard. After watching the Gfinity thing though, I I gotta be like, does I don't think they care like whether it's. I mean, like for for everyone who's like on the side of fairness, and let's be honest, the world isn't fair in the first place. You're gonna be like, wow, you know, like this is all gonna be controlled by old boys club, invite only, blah blah blah, pro league, etc. But at the same time, like, Gfinity got away with it. That was like what 80 percent invites. Obviously, Blizzard yeah. doesn't care in this regard. So like, everyone can make the big stink that they want to about it. I. I kind of feel like at the end of the day, as long as there's good StarCraft on the, on the stream, that's all anybody's really going to care about. Yeah. yeah, at this point, I feel like even if they added points to Pro League and like what you're getting at, Desro, which I see in this document that you want to get to and want to say, is that basically Total Biscuit's team will not be able to compete in Pro League. Uh, that That is an issue, and that does suck for him. But even if they did do it Pro League, that was something I suggested in the past. I don't think it would be unreasonable. Basically, with WCS in general, whether it be region lock or points or whatever, there's there's never going to be a perfect system. There's always going to be someone that's going to be able to complain and bitch. And uh, it does suck for Total Biscuit. I understand his point. And I think anybody else in his position would do the same. And he is more justified, uh, as Rifkin said, uh, because he has done so much for the scene in every single way. Um, but either way, if they add points to Pro League, they do the Spot TV side tournament as well as GSL. Um, it doesn't really matter. I think Korea will be taken care of, and uh, we'll still see really good games like uh, Rifkin once again said. Mm -hmm. um, what about the points given to Red Bull? Do you guys agree with that? Uh, I mean, I, I don't have getting, a full story on this. Can you give me the, the quick brief? So I, uh, basically, there's Red Bull DC happening this weekend. Yeah. There was two invite players parting SOS. There was a wall card slot which was uh, trap. There was Polt from uh, Red Bull. Yeah, the Atlanta. previous like, Red Bulls. So yeah. then the second slot was uh, Teja at. Uh, and yeah, yeah. Did anyway. So all of those players are not allowed to earn points unless they make, I think it's top four, and only Scarlet, DRG, and Cure are, are given points if they finish fifth to six to seven to eight, since it, they qualified for it. So only top four gives points unless the players who like recently qualified for it finish top eight. This is so ridiculous. Like, this is because I just finished bringing up with the whole like Gfinity thing. Like they're okay yeah. handing out WCS points like candy there. At, at this point, I know Blizzard released like a rule set of what a tournament had to be to get WCS points, and it had to have a certain number of qualifying spots for, or they had to have a certain number of like open bracket slots and blah blah blah, whatever you know, all this ruling. But they've come so far at this point where they've like totally taken that and thrown it out the window. Like WCS, pretty like Blizzard can just say. This tournament gets this amount of points. That tournament gets a certain amount of points. And other than that, people can't really say shit. It's Blizzard. 
-hmm. It's their tournament. They can assign however many points they want to. Unless they get, like, unrealistic and, you know, go for SC2 Sunday Finals as, like, 2K <laughs> WCS points for the winner oh, or something. Oh, God. I mean, at, at this point, I think they, they realize it's a big tournament. Uh, WCS points are getting down to the line. Like, imagine if Scarlet wins it and she gets 750 and then she has, like, a realistic shot at BlizzCon if she does well in another tournament. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. I think it's fine. You think Whatever. they were like, wow, we're giving 50k for StarCraft 2 to the winner. Can't you just throw us some uh, yeah. WCS points? Of course. Of course. Anybody at Red Bull is going to fight to try to get WCS points. It does, like, people say it doesn't make their decision as what well, as far as like whether they watch a tournament or not, but it definitely adds a level of hype. Like if Scarlet makes it to the finals, I don't know what points she's at, but she definitely needs WCS points. And that's just another storyline that can be added to a tournament possibility. So uh yeah. Of course they fought for it. And I think they somewhat deserve it. Alright. So um total biscuits salty as usual, WCS points possibly to Pro League, uh Red Bull uh you know, earning more points. Next topic, uh, run of uh, 8 of GSL, which is happening tomorrow uh, morning in 11 hours. We're going to have Cure versus Solar and Innovation versus Darn Rigu. And then uh, the two days after that, or three days after that, we're going to have Zest Rain and Stats. So, Kane, which match are you looking forward to the most? Oh, man. Okay. So, I'm going to break this down for you, okay? Yes. So, first is Cure versus Solar. Cure has been like, he's not gotten as much hype as he deserves. He's really fucking good. And if you talk to like somebody like Major, he'll vouch for him and say how good he actually was. Because they were on Team 8 together, I think it was. But yeah, Cure is really good. And then you have Solar, who's like the new up and comer, right? Mm -hmm. So when those two go off against each other, it's going to be, I think you're in for some really, really sick games. So that's one of the, game, one of the matches I'm most looking forward to. Same. Then we have Innovation versus Dongregu. And if you think back to when they played on Yantu a long time ago, that series, where Dongregu, it was like one of the sickest TV series of all time, and Dongregu actually managed to beat Innovation when he was at his absolute prime. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like a rematch of that. So that's, especially with like the new Terran buffs and stuff, it's going to be so cool to watch them play once again. Because I think Innovation is kind of coming back, especially with those buffs. Uh, so we'll see if Dongregu can kind of stop him. I don't uh, know, man. I, I, see more, I just want to say, I see more Widowmines kill Metamax than, like, anything else. Mutas, Hydras, they don't stand up to, like, the splash damage of Friendly Fire. <laughs> yeah, that's that's one part of it, but I don't know. TVZ is really tough these days, especially with the Thor buff. Unless you know how to play Swarmbox, <laughs> then it's pretty easy. But, uh, uh, and then I don't know much about people. I just know that Zest and Rain are also like Rain apparently had one of the best PVPs at one point, and Zest is looking unstoppable these days. So that's going to be a sick match for Rotos. <laughs> and then Stats versus Sue. Uh, I'm a little bit afraid of what might come from this match since we saw Sue get demolished by Super, and I'd say that Stats is a level above Super. So I'm, I'm kind of scared to see that that game. But it should be like if you look at it on paper, it should be one-sided for Sue, especially because he's made the past two GSL finals. So it'd be kind of be kind of surprising if he didn't make at least top four this time. Hmm. Yeah, those are just my thoughts. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a very nice uh, race distribution: three Zergs, three Protoss, and two Terrans. What about you, Rifkin? What are you looking forward to? Which match? Man, okay, so Kane already sold you guys in Cure versus Solar, but I want to talk about this just a little bit more. Because, like, Solar, yeah, Brandon is the up and comer and he's newer and all this other stuff, and Series versus Tasia, but Cure, I was like, Cure is one of the craziest games. Like, okay, so there's a map we cast for the IEM Toronto Qualifiers. It was Cure versus Curious, and Curious has got some sick TVZ or ZVT, right? Mm -hmm. He actually comes back from like a 1 1 versus 3 3 deficit. Makes Cure play like 20 minutes defensively, and still Cure wins that game. Like, it's. Cure can do some crazy things, and from the games we've cast of him, and there are VODs, plenty of VODs available um, from things we've seen with him. Like He is good, I think, impress people in this tournament. Whether he gets past the semifinals because he comes up potentially versus Innovation and TVT's TVT, I don't know. But um, yeah, I think Cure versus Solar is easily my favorite quarterfinal match, like without question. There's just so much more with these two guys being the underdogs fighting each other than, you know, y you've seen a million games of Innovation type thing. Mm -hmm. What about you, uh, Chris? 
What's the match you're looking forward to? Obviously, I'm looking forward to the PVZs in the PvP, or the PVZ in the PvP. Um, I really don't care about any other thing. I, I, I mean, I would, I like, I like hope. Uh, what what Solar kind of final and... would you like to see? I'm like, I don't know. That's too hard. I just hope I like Dongregu pers as like a personal friend more than the other kids in the top bracket. So I hope he does well. And then probably seeing Rain or Zest be dominant. I think they're they have the best shot. They're both really good players. Uh, obviously, Zest is a monster right now, so he probably has the best shot. I would say. And he he just has so many builds and he has so many playstyles he can choose from. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, before we move on, personally, I'd like to see Rain make a comeback and win the season, uh, just because I think that would push him enough to have to go to BlizzCon, and just so that uh, people would have faith in him again. Yeah, Rain is at uh, rank twenty right now, so if he'd win, he'd probably have enough points. I think. Yeah, that put can him. Can we? At, what? Well, as you say, can we all just like take a shot in the dark, dart, like close your eyes and guess who's like call it now so we can link this VOD back later in case any of us are right? Oh yeah, sure, sure. Uh, Rifkin, what do you think is gonna win? I gotta put my money on innovation. Yeah. I don't know, man. I don't know when's the finals. October fourth. Yeah, maybe. Wait, yeah, you're it's like gonna be hard. calculating how much time he has? No, but like he's gonna join SKT <laughs> soon. So there's a lot of rumors, and so that that gives him enough time to practice with like. I don't know, sorry, and uh, all the people in the SKT house. He's gonna. I can. I can see I think, Rifkin with that. Yeah, I mean, like the, the thing too is like the bottom half of the bracket's really scary. Like, I'm not even gonna be like full on Rifkin hates Protoss or anything like this, but like Zest Rain stats. Like, if Sue actually makes it to the finals, like, yeah, Sue's got the track record and all that. But those are three just absolutely phenomenal Protoss players that he might have to go through any two of them, and it's. It's. I. I think if it comes down to a TVP finals, like I think it might be, I kind of give that one innovation. His. Uh, his TVP has been looking pretty good recently, in my opinion. Okay. Zest looks weak to PVT too. Yeah. And he, well, he, he. He looked really weak against Flash. Yeah, and but, then he didn't have to play it that much at Caspa Cup. Yeah, but we all know that Flash versus uh, Zest was rigged. So. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> where are you guys' predictions? What about you, yeah. Huck? Who's Who's your favorite? I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say Rain. I think Zest is favored against Rain in this PvP, but I think Rain has the best shot at winning the whole thing. What about you, Kane? I think whoever wins the PvP is gonna win. What? You don't believe in Solar or Sue? Uh, man, Zerg's looking like Korean Zerg's right now. It looks like they're having a lot of trouble. Yeah, it's it's not it it's 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 Zerg in general, but I also think Koreans like the difference between a foreign Protoss and a Korean Protoss is a lot bigger than a foreign Zerg and a Korean Zerg IMO. Like I think Snoop ZVP is the best in the world right now. Period. Like he ha he beat Hero pretty convincingly, and Hero is like a beast PVZ. Beat him twice. Yeah, and they were like really good macro games too. Okay. Um. Right, Again, I, th I think it's like a clash of styles almost, but yeah, I would I would agree with you, saying that Snoot has some of the best PvZ, if not the best PvZ. I, yeah, I think that's fair to say. Uh, he's got the most experience, definitely, in, uh, in finals uh, also. Uh, the next topic is the ladder season four map, uh, <laughs> map pool. Uh, so, so one thing that I think a lot of players or a lot of community people were giving shit to Blizzard was your maps are a little bit too serious sometimes, and it'd be nice to mix it up. And uh, they literally took it uh, word for word. And so, uh, season four. This is after uh, BlizzCon, by the way, which uh, we'll we'll talk about uh, that at the end, uh, like the problems that they, that it creates. But uh, basically, what Blizzard wants to do is a return of the classics. Uh, you can post in the forums, you can post on Twitter which map is your favorite by using the hashtag DreamPool. So maps like uh, Zalnaga Caverns, Antigua Sheep, uh, Shipyard, and so on. You can go uh, tell Blizzard which one you prefer. Um, I think it's cool that Blizzard is trying to mix it up in between seasons. It, it sure creates some problem, but I don't think it's the end of the world. But uh, when it comes down to it, Huck, which maps do you have the most like memorable... 
games on. The one, like, if you had to tweet, like, right now, which maps would you ask for? Um, Jesus. I would say Desert Oasis, Steps of War. Wait, Desert uh, Oasis? Yeah, I think it would play out so much different now than it did back when like I think it would actually be not a completely horrible map yeah, even though your back Oracle then would get there so quickly that's nice eh? not even that I think like back then people hated the map and then the meta was so different and playstyles were so different compared to now I think it would be one of the better maps if you could pick one of the old maps compared to the maps nowadays like it'd be one of the more balanced maps um, how's your uh, how's your TVP huck yeah, Metavax would be a problem for sure. Yeah. And uh, but I think it'd be really fun. So I would want to play those two maps. Uh, I would want to play. Hmm. I don't even know, man. You, I would have to like look at a list or something. But those are yeah, the two first could... maps I would think of. Yeah. I I think in general, Terran's gonna be really strong on most of the maps. Yeah, but but that's well, how it is. Just, you don't just like the old days. Yeah. yeah, no, you, you know, then you can like start naming like a Tiga shipyard, just bring Blink back into favor. Right? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, the, the, yeah. There's a there's a lot a lot of things to think about, but it it makes sense. Like, it, this is the most off season. Like, like we have San Jose or whatever, possibly question mark that I know is going to be brought up later. But this is the most off season you're going to get for StarCraft Two. So if they're going to do something like this, it makes sense to do it now, and I think it'll be fun. And if you're like a pro gamer and you really want to play the old maps, then you could still find custom games or whatever to practice on. So I think it's a really cool idea, and I'm I'm looking forward to doing it. And I think it'll be really cool for streamers too. Yeah. If you're streaming and playing on all the old maps. Yeah, that's a we big turn thing. We turn on, man. Maybe, maybe there'll be like a troll tournament too on these old maps just to see and fuck around or something like that. I think that'd be really cool. I don't know. I think it's They've fun. They've done that nice. before as well. Yeah. Right. Done... Actually. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, that's what we've done for our show matches today. Like, prior to, I'd say, the last two months, every show match we had had at least three maps in it that were either old or weird. And we, we've done things with, like, um, Cloud Kingdom and, and whatnot in the past. And, I mean, it seems really cool because it's so, like, at first glance, you're like, oh, man, it's been so long. But really, I look at this and I'm like, this actually added no extra value. It was kind of interesting that the games were pretty much played out the exact same way I think they would have been played out on some other maps. There's definitely some influences, like, you know, Cloud Kingdom in um, certain matchups. But i got to be honest, I look at this and I'm just like, yo, did Blizzard just give up on making maps? Like, that's... <laughs> Because, I mean, it's been going downhill, right? There's the complaints about them getting bigger, and they kept getting bigger, and they kept getting bigger. I mean, Zombie Gum and I have talked in the cat past, too. Like, do you remember when Whirlwind was considered a huge map? Yeah. That thing's, like, like a fourth of the size of Alter Z. Like, they've taken it to such an extreme now. I almost feel like they're doing this. Not because, like, I'm not saying they're stupid and they're out of ideas and they don't know how to make maps anymore. But I kind of feel like this is like, all right, we, we've hit our critical mass. Let's calm down for a while. Take a lot of extra time to think about this. What can we do in the downtime? Bring up the old maps instead of making new ones. I don't know. Yeah, I I definitely understand the other side of the metal for sure. Um, and but then again, at the same time, like it kind of gives them more time to have a quality map pool instead of trying to rush things and come up with like decent maps for the new season. Because I one thing that I would like with uh, next year is to start with a fresh map pool. Like yeah, but I think that's 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 what I would think they're doing is. It's they actually put a lot of work into choosing maps and the process that they go about that, and to come out with new maps right after BlizzCon is kind of useless because there's not going to be a lot of tournaments. It's not going to be like showcased that well. A lot of people, like I know, a lot of pro gamers from NA and EU are going to kind of take a break, probably play like other games, study, go on vacation, whatever. So it's kind of useless to come out with like you know, three new maps that people don't really play that much and then you're unsure about them and you don't really have the effort to justify the means in, uh, in, in the new maps. So I think, cool. it's, I think it's a cool idea. And I'm sure they're going to still be working on new maps while this season is going, like, happening. Right. But it buys, them, it buys them time to be more dedicated to finding those good maps for, for the new WCS season next year. Well, to touch on Desert's point, like, if that means that they come up with a brand new map pool, I'm not talking, like, you know, three new maps, or like, a whole new map pool, I would actually be in big favor of the extra downtime if that's what it means. Because, 
I mean, every season, and I've talked with several people, like combination ESL and players. Like it's 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 almost like a joke at this point. Like, oh, new season comes out. How many times have we seen Overgrowth be map number one and King Sejong be map number two? Right? Like, you're watching the same maps over and over and over again. We got all these cool new ones like Deadwing and Foxtrot, and like, okay, they're imbalanced versus balance, whatever. But you always see the same two over and over and over. And this has been true. Like, how many times have we ever watched Belshear ne never get vetoed and picked first? Stuff like that. So, if they actually come up with a brand new map pool, I think personally that would be the coolest for me because it's going to inspire new play. And it'll be more interesting to watch than seeing like Deadwing picked first every single time because it was the, the most recent map. Yeah. I, I mean,. The only map I'd want them to keep is like Foxtrot, just to fuck with people. Like, hey, you've, <laughs> you've been videoing it every fucking tournament. Now deal with it, bitch. And then just leave it there. That'd be Can, great. Do are they keeping the veto system? Because if there's still like insane, stupid maps, like let's say you're a Terran player and you're getting Blink all in every game, you could still veto Antigua, Cloud Kingdom, etc. So it's not yeah. a horrible thing, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, usually it's seven maps, three vetoes on ladder. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it's um, and one thing you you talked about was uh, it'll be good for streamers, and that's one thing I was pushing to Blizzard like uh, a month or two ago. Like you know those crazy maps with the lava and the bridge with the timer and everything. Like yeah. just make something that we can fucking dick around with. Like just have fun. Like I know yeah. ladder is not supposed to be fun, but try. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta try at some point. What about you, Kane? Right now, two maps you wanna see back. Hashtag uh, mm. dream, dream map pool. Is that the hashtag? I wanna see uh, dream pool. heavy rain because I never lost EVP. Oh, on that dude. Map. Oh, yeah, I, I literally, nice. like, I was fucking god on that map. <laughs> the yeah. only time I ever saw you lose on that map was to, like, Stardust, and that was, like, it. Like, yeah, every yeah. time I ever cast you in a tournament, Heavy Rain, I was like, Kane's got this, no question. That's yeah. the map this I'm going to immortal in every single this game. This guy, dude, Kane, I want to give him a bit of a credit here. Kane goes swarm host against a guy, a Protoss, like, Sky t Titan, I think it was, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Titan goes, like, just mass carriers, mass Tempest, like, everything in the air, not a single ground unit. Tempest goes, or, and Kane goes swarm host and wins that game. Like, I just want to say, like, it's... <laughs> it was, like, it was unbeatable on that map. Yeah. So imbalanced. Yeah, Heavy Rain, it's some then, cool stuff to it. I want to see either Cloud Kingdom or Ohana, because you could get Creeps Fred so fast on that map. Oh, like, TVZ. Yeah. On Ohana? TVZ. Yeah, oh I God. hated yeah. that. I remember playing against Scarlet, and I was just like, like, I don't, <laughs> I can't, like, there's nothing I can do. Like, I just feel yeah. like there's Creep at my base, and I'm just, like, lost here. Like, there's nothing was, I can do. You could spread it faster in TVZ as well. That's the scary yeah. thing. Isn't it like four or five tumors to make it from the natural to the fourth of the Protoss? Something uh, like that? Maybe a couple more, like maybe seven or eight or something, mm -hmm. but yeah, it was really fast. Yo, you could always go full TLO and just like proxy cancel hatch <laughs> queen creep doom across the map. It's not even worth it, man. <laughs> <laughs> but it's cool. It's cool. It's, it's creative, right? Actually, you know what? Uh, Starbuck did that versus <laughs> first in DreamHack, and he beat first. I'm just saying. It was like round of 16 last DreamHack. <laughs> Jesus. So Starbuck has some pretty cool. Oh, sorry, Kane. No, no, no. What, what about you, Rifkin? Right now, Dream Pool, two maps. Man, see, this is the thing. You're, I, I, I'm like so Mr. Negative and opposite about this. Like, I wouldn't pick two maps. I would just pick the maps I don't want to see. And that's the ones that were picked every fucking season. So, like, Belshir, get the fuck out of here. Ohana, get out of here. Uh, Overgrowth, King Sage, I'm like, get out of here. Like, anything else I'm actually legit happy with. Because, of course, I cast a lot more than I play. I'm a shitty player, whatever. But um, from what we see, like, I would just not want to see the ones that were played all the time. We've already seen them a million times through the previous seasons. Bring back the ones that we didn't get to see a lot of. What about the team uh, team game maps? Who, who the fuck cares? Go away, I hate you. <laughs> um, I think... Uh, Yo, learn to do racks, Desert. That's all I'm saying. Fuck. God damn it. <laughs> uh, I think Shakuras would be, would be legit to play. And I think Taldarim with the no rocks at the third would be legit with the current meta. I would hate Taldar Taldarim so much. Why? PvP. It'd oh. be so bad. But if, with Photon of Recharge, it's so much better now. Mm, yeah, maybe, I guess. Like, look at Nimbus. <laughs> like, sure, there's a ramp, but Force, uh, Forge doesn't win every game. Like, it'd be similar with... Uh, Yo, you guys remember that map that was really similar to Nimbus, Crevasse, with Tidra and Cruncher and the Smiley? And those were the good Man, games. I always, 
I always thought Alter Z was more similar to an Abyss. Yeah, fuck Alter Z, man. It was like fucking a minute to cross the map. Such yeah, a... it's it's too big. Yeah. That and like Waystation with the top left, bottom right spawns, they went too far with that. Actually, yeah. you know what? I as much as this map was picked, I'm gonna recant my statement. About it. I'd like to see Aklon come back because Aklon gave some of the most epic games. Yeah. Oh yeah, and no, one thing I liked about it was the force fields and the roaches and the rocks. You could kill some uh, serious amount of units with that. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember. Yeah, I I wish Blizzard would try to or map makers would try to uh, put that back in. I I was really shocked when it really like needs uh, force fields to die or a fungal. Like, what do you guys think about that? Just off topic, like the rocks that it it needs to be like static there to die. Otherwise, it gets pushed away. Huck. I'm not sure what you mean. You know, like, when you kill the rocks, right? You know when the rocks roll over? It needs to be trapped in a force field, or it needs oh, to the be units. fungal the, okay. to die. Oh, yeah, 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 I yeah. thought you were talking about the rocks. I'm like, why the fuck are you fungling rocks? Idiot. No. <laughs> 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 what do you think, Chris? Do you think it's legit that you have to block them there for them to die? No, I would much rather... I think it'd be a lot more exciting if it, uh... If it just killed them and you didn't have to force them and it didn't shove the units out of the way. Because yeah. it's a lot scarier and a lot cooler when you have moments like that than when you have to physically make it fucking, happen. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Like, um, you know, you talked about the lava map a moment ago. It's kind of the same concept, right? Like, mm -hmm. How sick would it be if you just, like, forceful someone off and they die in the lava? You're like, no, you're not coming with me, man. <laughs> fucking die, motherfucker. That's that's one of those moments where you're just like fuck Protoss, dude. Like for real. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um. So next topic we have. Well, that's actually a really nice thing. Uh, I am San Jose. Coming up. Sorry, what? San Jose. What the fuck did you just say? Jose, man. Jose, Jose. You trying to say? Are you eat jalapenos in San Jose? Like all what right. the fuck? I've actually been to San Jose. It's a nice city, but it's it, it's kind of sucky. Really is that cool. because you're pronouncing wait, it San Jose the no, whole time? No, no. Wait, like, wait, wait, wait. What? You can say, I just heard you. You pronounced an H just now. Why the fuck can't you do that with other words? Man, fuck you. <laughs> so San much. Jose? What if you yes. go to the hospital at San Jose? Like, how are you going to ask for that? They're going to be like, what the hospital. fuck? The, the hospital in San Jose? Hospital. Where's that? No, like, I, I know how to do the H. Go back just... to Europe. <laughs> yes, it's hard to be French, guys. So, uh, San Jose. I've been to San Jose... Uh, it's a nice city. It kind of sucks that it's close to the airport because if you're outside talking, literally every 20 to 30 minutes, you're going to have to shut the fuck up for two minutes while a plane just goes above you. It makes a lot of noise. So uh, it's, a, it's a weird city, but it's nice. And uh, so IEM is doing League of Legends and StarCraft 2. Um, oh, what, what, I, want, I want more info, though, on how they're doing StarCraft 2. Is it like a, because it, it's not going to be a regular... WCS point tournament, obviously, since it's during the off season, right? Yeah, obviously, but is it going to be like I assume it's going to be a regular IAM tournament, which is good for us, I guess, because we'll get to go to it most likely. But I don't know. I, I, it, they, they made it seem very, very special with the announcement and the way that it, I don't know, just happened. But I haven't heard any details on how it's any different than any other tournament besides being in a big stadium. Which for me, as a player, doesn't really mean shit. Because a lot of these tournaments where they've had them in big stadiums, like the Staples Center for the LOL tournament was really cool because they filled it up, right? But the, the, the ESL tournament they had in Germany or whatever, they had this huge stadium. And they, and they had like a lot of the chairs and a lot of the fans were just on the field. And there was just like chairs on the field. So it wasn't like they filled up the stadium and it was like... Wow, this huge impressive thing. It was just like, okay, we're surrounded by empty seats Watch it. in a stadium. Yeah. And it's like, I mean, I guess it's like a hallmark because they can sell it enough people to book the stadium. But it wasn't like it was packed or anything. So that's not a selling point for me yeah. as like a, a player or a fan. Watch them do like three quarter of the stadium with LOL. And then, like on the other half, you no, have like a little StarCraft thing. That, that, are you kidding me? That's what it will be. Yeah. Regardless, yeah. So, are you kidding me? Jokes. There's, it's not like the only time StarCraft competes with LOL as far as fans or viewerships is when they don't, they're not LCS players, and then StarCraft crushes LOL because no one gives a shit about LOL besides the LCS, but they're gonna be LCS that's, teams. So, man, that's so much like StarCraft though. Like LOL's got that same dynamic where it's like if it's not a Korean team, like who gives a fuck? Like you've got LCS building hype and that's cool, but like without it, like no one really cares. 
Yeah. yeah. Well, everybody just wants to see the best, most popular players. I bet they wanted to do Dota Satan? and LoL, but uh, Riot said fuck that. I think, yeah. Well, well, that's obvious to a certain degree at this point. But it, it's cool for it's cool for LoL to they start opening up back up into open tournaments because for a long time now Riot's had like this Strangle. we're only gonna run it yeah. yeah yeah but I mean they always like throw a ball at them like uh, there was I am Katowice earlier this year and then I think the year before they had like a uh, Dreamac that that had LoL or something they always let ESL like mm. have one one off well, event. Before, there was a lot of tournaments where they ran a lot of the uh, LCS tournaments at different events. And then what happened this last year is they really restricted it. But then the team started to complain that they are not... Like, it's cool to be a pro gamer and get to travel, you know, and play at, like, different tournaments, meet different fans. Because a lot of the fans aren't going to fly to California just to watch an LCS game, right? And a lot of people are going to want to go to DreamHack and stuff or whatever, like this uh, San Jose event. So I think uh, it's a smart move for them. Yeah. It'll be interesting. I uh, Obviously, as a player, we're, we're hoping for uh, open bracket qualifiers per region. You know, the usual same... Uh, Starcraft format. Ooh, what what would be really interesting actually is how they're going to do the wild card invites because you know how they always have wild card invites and now they yeah. can't really rely on the WCS point shit anymore. Yeah, but they they also said like uh, they also said it was based on tournament winnings, not only WCS points. Yeah, but it's stupid anyways. Yeah, but hey, I, Kane, how does this affect you living in Europe? By the way, like, are you going to be able to go to something like this, or how's that? I'm work? planning to come home like beginning of uh, November oh. or like end of October so I should be fine okay yeah it was planned for December right beginning of yes December, December yes. 7 to 8 yeah 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 so it should be to fine. Seven. Yeah. so yeah um, my my I think they're gonna do round of 16 like they're not gonna do groups they're not gonna do open bracket obviously it's two oh, days. really well it's two days they can't do a four-day event with the open bracket and everything I don't know. A lot of the SL tournaments feel really stretched out sometimes. I mean, they could they could cram an open like, bracket do you, in two do you, days. Like Toronto, when I was playing it, it felt like there was so much downtime as a player. Yeah. Like they constantly had you waiting for matches. So if they wanted to make it work, they could make it work. But yeah. it really depends. Because it's still going to be a lot smaller than a dream hack, which has like two... One completely useless group stage, which though they won't have because they'll only have good players there. And then they'll have, you know... One one like legit group stage and then just the round of sixteen. They can do it if they want to. They just gotta <laughs> not be as bad as they have been. Okay, so there's like the time constraint thing and all that. And I just want to contest like the whole point of useless though, because I mean it is kind of a big deal for the fans to get involved, like whatever the audience for the open bracket and stuff like that. I mean, uh, DreamHack you call it useless, but for the locals to log on and play, I kind of feel like it's a huge deal. A part of what adds a lot of the hype to the tournament, knowing that if you go to DreamHack. You could play. It's probably not going to get you anywhere, and it's going to maybe waste people's time. But um, I think it adds a lot to these tournaments. And this is just for me as a obviously non-player point of view. Yeah, I mean, no, yeah, I just I just true. meant in like strictly time-wise, they're yeah. going to be oh, compared to yeah. DreamHack, who yeah. has this one group stage. ESL never does that, so I'm not saying it's a bad thing to have it. I'm just saying time-wise, they're okay. Like if you compare like. Uh, the time DreamX spends on uh, first, like the first group stage compared to MLG, who spends time on maybe like the first three rounds of winner and loser open bracket, it's like eight hours versus like two or three hours of matches, you know? And yeah, you actually get to see the ones at MLG, or sorry, at uh, DreamX. Ha! Yeah. Shots fired! Well, I mean, uh. MLG is pretty, pretty much done, so. Um, Alright, last last but not least, uh, Take is coming out with a new tournament. It's called uh, Against the Odds, which uh, is a little bit... Uh, it's it's like an Ohm Story Cup, right? Is that it? I don't no, know. The, the way they're doing qualifiers so. is so radically different, though. It's not... Um, like, Ohm Story Cup just has your generic qualifiers oh, to each yeah. region, right? Mm -hmm. This is like really weird way of doing like uh, non barcode like GM accounts and then like twelve invited players as well. I don't know. It's it looks really cool in my opinion. Okay, so they'll do three qualifiers in which the top two advance as well as the top top six 
non-barcode EU it's online master. Okay. Yeah, yeah it's online it's for $50. so it's like it's like destiny's tournament almost yeah yeah it's a little bit yeah yeah it's a fifteen hundred dollar tournament players like uh, store custom and impact has been uh invited so basically uh against the odds is just they're gonna have uh good players but that are not favorites play versus really good players and so it'll be like it'll basically be like uh, good players making it well, far, I'm, and then possibly a couple upsets, right, Rifkin? Well, I'm really curious about Kane's point of view on this because this kind of reminds me of very similar to like Shoutcraft style, where okay, there's the chance like you can bank it all on winning a qualifier, or instead of playing any of the qualifiers, you could just like go ham on the ladder, right? And like. We saw this on NA a couple of times. Everyone's always like, you know, it invigorates the play style. But Europe's already got a pretty good freaking ladder in the first place. I don't think it's going to invigorate it or anything. But those top six slots, I think, are going to be really competitive. And I'm really curious on Kane's point of view for that. So, so okay, tell me, tell me again, what is this top six for? It's like okay, if basically, you don't have a barcode, you can, you're invited if you're top six on EU Top ladder. six on ladder. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so you can so either yeah, play like, the qualifiers and do that, or either or, or both. It's all up to you. And it would be like any any players in the top six, not just Europeans. It could be Koreans as well. Anyone yeah, top six? What Koreans going to play EU ladder? It's stupid they waited the way the way they did the ladder invite though, because when Destiny did it and Shellcraft did it, they did it before the new season restarted. So there's it's up for grabs. They're doing it now mid season. Grandmaster is probably full for one, yeah, yeah, yeah. and for yeah. two, you're gonna if if it's not, you're gonna get into the scene and you're gonna start playing and you're gonna start from like like if I started playing right now, I don't have an EU account, so I would have like a fourteen hundred bonus pool that yeah. I'm never gonna finish, that I'm never gonna have a shot. And the same thing with Koreans. Koreans don't have EU accounts, so they're never gonna have a shot yeah. at qualifying. Yeah, players like Hyun for GG are at the top of Masters right now. Uh, Jakshi. Uh, is there, I think I saw Grubby somewhere in there, or maybe not. But yeah, there's a lot of players that are not in GM because of the bonus pool, because GM is full. Uh, so what's your take on it, Keen? I mean, I kind of agree. It's, European ladder is already pretty competitive. Like, a lot of, some players don't really ladder, like Hurstum, and I don't think Mini Razor ladders that much, or they mostly play custom. So I think they would start playing more. But for the most part, it's already really competitive. There's a lot of really good players that always ladder, and you see them yeah. quite frequently. Uh, it's not like any ladder where you're facing the same three players over and over and over again. Uh, there's a lot of different varied play styles, and yeah, it's. I don't think it would do much to invigorate the ladder. It's already pretty invigorated. Okay. All right. Any final thoughts, Rifkin? Are you going to be? Are they casting in English or German? Are you going to be the caster? I have no idea yet. I'm going to suck a dick and see if I can be, but uh, <laughs> I don't know. It, it, it's cool. I, I just love because the Red Bull do the different thing with the best of, wait, or how was that? The, the, the lives, lives thing? Yeah. yeah, how did they phrase that? It wasn't like a loser's bracket or I don't remember. But yeah, the lives thing was kind of cool. So we got to see how things could be different than now we got this against the odds thing. Okay, maybe the ladder invites a little bit wonky, but there's still qualifier slots, right? So it's I'm really excited to see how it goes. It looks cool. Okay. <laughs> Fuck you, Chris. All right, moving on. <laughs> uh, moving on to the viewer questions. Uh, Chris gave me a little bit of crap here, so that's why I replied yes. Don't worry, we're still good friends. He's. I. This is not feed me number two. Um, all right. <laughs> Calm down, Big Des. No one was accusing wow, you. Wow. No. 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 We don't start that here, bro. All right. <laughs> so, uh, viewer questions. Let me get to the Reddit thread. Oh dear Lord, it's at the bottom of the gutters. Man, parting having a webcam is more upvotes than us. We, we haven't made it, boys. All right, viewer questions. Um, you're the front page of Twitch. You're complaining about not having made it. Shut up, Desmond. All right. What do you feel about Richard and Steven's sequel to Unfiltered? Is there room for both shows in StarCraft 2? Well, I feel like their show is like one-fifth of StarCraft, or like one-quarter of StarCraft, so obviously there's room for both. Moving on. Oh, this one's good. And I actually am I'm interested in the answer uh, for personal reasons. What's the best way to improve, especially at a high level like Kane? No mention of Huck, but... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Rip on, baby. Rex. Rip. And Rip. it's uh, Prime Lot from uh, German Protoss, by the way. Shout out to Prime Lot, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, go ahead, Kane. What, what's the best way to improve at a high level? All right. Uh, it differs for a lot of players. Like different people learn differently, right? So I know, for example, when I'm in North America, I watch a lot of VODs, like a lot, a lot, a lot of VODs, because North American ladder isn't really good practice, and I don't get that good a ping to Korea. So I'll, I'll watch like every tournament, every single game, uh, stuff like that. When I'm in Europe, uh, I talk with a lot of players, especially in the My Insanity house. I'll play a lot of games. And since I'm in a team house dedicated to practice, I also do watch quite a few VODs. Um, for me, for me personally, the best way to learn is watching, and that's just like general gameplay stuff. But for mechanics and stuff, playing is always the best option. So it's kind, it kind of depends on what you want to work on, and uh, yeah, kind of where you are and the most efficient way that you learn. Yeah. Which which one is your favorite to work on? Mechanics, watching vods, or well, obviously talking with people is a lot of fun. But you have to pick between the first two. I think probably watching, yeah, like, there's nothing better to me than watching, like, a really good Zerg play. I learn a lot, just even in, like, cheese games or silly games, I, I do learn a lot in their play, so I would probably choose that. Yeah. I feel it like my feel mechanics... Like to you? You're still no, interested no. every, every no. time? Yeah, I'm, I'm interested in, like, whenever Sue or Dongrigu is playing, like, I'll almost always watch their games, and I always find it entertaining. But, so, so your passion uh, is very strong, then? Yeah, I've never I, had a problem with like motivation or anything like that. Oh, for sure. I have a question for Kane actually off that too. Um, what channel like obviously it's gonna be like WCS. I'm not trying to float my own boat here. Hope for an answer, but like you know, what channels do you actually go to to watch vods? Like, what's your best resource for this for the other people who want to hop on the Kane I guess training regiment? Do you watch anything? Yeah. So everything. What? Yeah. Like, and why is it based trade TV? When, <laughs> whenever there's a <laughs> tournament going on, I'll always take note of the streams that are casting it. And I'll try to make sure that they have, like, bots enabled, right? Mm -hmm. When they don't, I'll, especially when I'm at home, I'll always record it uh, with XSplit or with OBS or whatever you use. I'll always try to record it if they're not doing VODs. Yeah. Or if they are, uh, I'll just wait if I can't watch it live. But yeah, I, I usually prefer to watch it live because it's more entertaining for me. Uh, oh. And I end up, sometimes I, when I watch VODs, I skip over because I'm a little bit not bored, but just I want to get to the good parts of the game, so I'll end up skipping stuff, and sometimes that stuff is a little important. Mm -hmm. uh, so I prefer watching it live, and yeah, just whatever streams are are casting it, I'll always take note of which ones. What about first person streams like Sex Tree or uh, Yon Don Rigo? Actually, Yon hasn't streamed in forever, but mm, it's it's unreliable sometimes because they don't show their best play sometimes, <laughs> especially yeah. if it's like before or tournament or whatever. Mm -hmm. But uh. Yeah, like if it, and recently there haven't been many good Zerg streaming, but when there is, I'll always tune in. Yeah, for sure. Have you recorded those? Yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, especially like Dong Riku and Hyun, I always recorded their vods. Yeah. I I think that's what I'm gonna do with Myung Sik or Parting. Sometimes mm -hmm. it can be fun to watch, but they're. And if you have a if you have a second monitor, it's also really easy to do because you can do shit on your first monitor while you record on the second. Parting's yeah. a sick two v two strats, Des. You gonna go write this down? Fight against people like Huck and whatnot. Yeah, <laughs> I think I crushed actually. Uh, Huck can answer the the Huck and Zen crushed parting and bomber, and the two v two is they played on stream. Yeah, actually those are fun. I had both. I had Huck stream and parting stream up while while they were doing that. It was fun to watch. I wish there was more of that, truthfully, between gamers. Like maybe not make a whole stream about it, but like an hour where you like set up something gimmicky, like whether it's a show match or 2v2 team game or whatever, like, I just feel like that adds a lot to for someone like me as a viewer who wants to stop by and watch the stream. Like, I might not otherwise want to tune into Huck playing Ladder Grind on EU, but it's like, oh, well, I started watching the 2v2, but I'm going to hang around afterwards because I'm already here. Yeah. Yeah, it used to be popular. Like, I remember uh, doing a show match versus Dragon. I remember Dragon doing a show match versus Maximus Black with one end. I remember Huck versus Destiny back when... Uh, Huck was uh, the odd shit, and he was in Korea. And fucking Destiny was still beating me because investors were insanely strong. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. There used to be a lot of things like that, like the Muslim and Tara Babcock. Obviously, the Muslim had uh, interests there. But uh, Huck, what about you? You've talked about it a little bit previously. How to improve um, as a good player, even though you weren't asked. 
Maybe uh, <laughs> Yeah, I don't want to give my fucking sage advice to this Is guy he... that doesn't give a shit about me. All right. Oh, so... are you are you even qualified to? I mean, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, you're. I mean, you're only round of eight in WCSNA, like. Whoever... Right. Like, that's not even finals. Who cares? Yeah. Like. <laughs> um, I I'd say similar things that King said. Um. Watching stuff is very helpful. I basically will watch all the Korean pro tosses. Uh, I won't. I most likely won't watch people that I think are similar skill or below skill than me. So like a lot of the DreamHack games, I don't give but a shit about. You still watch my stream. Does that mean? Because you're a personal friend. I it oh. hurts me to say that, but fuck, <laughs> I guess I just said it. <laughs> oh but, yeah, uh, I made it. All right, keep going. But uh, I think you don't learn that much from a first person kind of view. So in general, I'll watch all the Korean games. Dream hacks and shit, I usually won't watch unless it's high skill. So like for I Am Toronto, I'll watch Flash First Hero or whatever like that. Uh, I, didn't, I don't go to the extreme lengths that Kane does. That's really cool that he records games if he doesn't get a chance to watch the VODs or they don't have it as an option. Um, practice obviously helps a lot. And custom games help a lot. It really depends what you need to practice for. Like for me, starting tomorrow... I have to practice for my round of eight, and I'll know my opponent starting tomorrow, and I'll have, you know, like, three weeks or something, two weeks to practice for it. So, if it's, like, versus Teja, then I'll search for Teja games, and I'll watch all of his VODs for maybe last the last two or three weeks, and then I'll see if he has any weaknesses, I'll study them really, like, I don't know if you guys watched the gym game when I played gym, but I played gym... And he always proxy stargates on overgrowth at the same spot, and it looked like I fucking map hacked because my mothership went right to where he proxy gated, and I knew it was gonna be there because he did it a month ago, two weeks ago, and a week ago at WEC, and he always proxies the stargate there, and he always does that build on wow. that map. So I knew if I pick this map, then he like chances are he'll probably proxy it. I, I I scouted it, and it was like a free win. So it definitely pays off to study. But then again, I'm going to DreamHack Stockholm like Kane is. And in that kind of tournament situation, you really can't do specific studying for 32, 64 players or whatever. So it's more of just general practice, general mechanics, keeping up with the meta, and you know, uh, varying your play styles. So you have you know, some all-ins to pick from, you have some cheesy things, you have macro game, you have all these different styles. So uh, it's actually a lot of work, but... Uh, I guess all yeah, in a day's work. Yeah, yeah, there you go. All right, moving on. Next question. Uh, a few. Well, I guess Huck and uh, Kane weren't d there last last show, so that's what I'm gonna ask. Uh, thoughts from everyone on how the NA scene will develop in 2015 with Region Luck. Huck, you have a minute. Go. Um, I think it'll be good. Hopefully, Red Bull still runs tournaments, and hopefully, the the biggest thing is it's gonna rely on the players being motivated. Uh, it'll be really sucky if we only have like three or four Koreans here and then NA players are still extremely lazy and we basically don't get better. So it's all really dependent on how motivated the NA players put into it and how much effort because otherwise it'll still be shitty. I feel like there's a lot of players that are like maybe top 100 GM that have a lot of fire in them. I feel like people like maybe like you, you could even put myself in that group and like illusion and like Maybe the Xenociders and the Suppies, you know, they've they've been there and they've done it, and so it's a lot harder to revive a fire when it when it was uh, like when it died than starting a new fire. I know it's I a actually, fucked up analogy, but your I would love to see. Him? There's like really good players like Huck, right? Actively there, Cup America, WCS, whatever. He's playing in tournaments, right? Um, so the front runners, I guess. I would love to see some of the guys who kind of like laid back I guess like you've, you've got really talented players like Illusion and Masa and stuff but you don't see them come out for like anything mm -hmm. and I know it probably has more to do with real life than anything else but I would love if StarCraft 2 was thus at the point where it could prioritize over say studying for one night instead of like well you know what it's whatever I'm probably not gonna win I'd rather study for this test tomorrow I'm not saying like I'm not trying to enforce bad behaviors but I'm just saying like if StarCraft 2 becomes to the point where it's a priority, I would love to see some of the guys who are just kind of like the hidden gems, so to speak, come out more, mm -hmm. be more active, try and get that sort of huck approach to things. I mean, and not, not everybody has a team that can fly them to every event or anything like this, and I'm not saying that um, that's the only way to do it, but still, you got really good players in Canada and North in America that they just, mm -hmm. you don't see them. When they do come out once in a while, it's amazing, and yeah. that's, that's like the problem, Angelus it's once too. in a while. Yeah. Oh, fuck Angelus, the guy's... <laughs> 
No good. <laughs> All right. Kane, your thoughts on, uh, on the question quickly? Uh, yeah, I think it'll be really interesting. I really don't know how it's going to go. Like, I don't even have a guess. But here's what I'm hoping for, and I'm going to be salty, okay? I hope players oh. like Astoji and, like, Dodoro and all of those guys come back who are, like, at one point pretty good in the scene. I hope they come back and they just get crushed. Like, yeah. there's, there's nothing that would make me happier than seeing that. Yeah. And I know what that's about, salty or whatever, but oh what god, about that, user? Oh, oh my yeah, god, I, user. I, cannot, I cannot wait to see players like that get Man, absolutely you were friends crushed. with him, you guys had a Skype group and everything. Yeah, we're, we're, we're friendly and stuff, but oh god, can't wait. <laughs> I, 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 I generally agree with that, because I feel like the game has changed so much. There's, like, the skill level has risen so far compared to when they were good that yeah. it's like... Even if they put in a lot of effort, it's somewhat likely that they just end up, they come back in their shit. And you know, part of it is like, here's Huck and I, and we've been practicing ever since those guys left. We've been like working our asses off. Meanwhile, they've been off, like, jerking off and studying, or whatever. <laughs> like, you know, they've been studying or working, Go. or whatever. <laughs> yes, playing, playing other games. And it, it'd just be so fun to see that hard work really, really pay off and yeah. kind of teach these guys a lesson. I was thinking just... about that last week, or whenever like it came out, like so many people, like uh, Kiwikaki, Slush, uh, we lost so many, <laughs> we lost so many players that just they wanted to play, but there was just no money to make NNA because MLGs were stacked with Koreans, and there was not a lot, you know, IPL switch switch from NA only to uh, worldwide very very quickly, so. Maybe maybe we'll see some old names come back. You know, it'll definitely be nice. Like, I I kind of want to make like a kiwi khaki smurf to start the hype. But uh, maybe you should do that, Huck, because you you both are crazy. But anyway, people already have. There's already yeah. a kiwi khaki smurf, and there's like a ghost user smurf. Can... There's a lot of different smurfs right now. Yo, bring back all the quantic flow accounts. <laughs> oh God. I think <laughs> yeah, kiwi yeah. khaki. <laughs> kiwi khaki's playing uh, Blizz Heroes. He's trying to make a Blizz Heroes team. So rip. Oh, rip. All right, uh, question from the same guy on Reddit, Castative. Cast uh, he asked the previous question, and his question now is, uh, people never talk about this. I always face palm when I see players drink Red Bull or something ahead of a match. I just saw it again in WCSU. The sugar is just so bad for consecration. So what are the people's opinion on that? C consecration? consecration? What is That's consecration? A That's a paladin spell, I'm just saying. Con <laughs> concentration. Yeah. There you go. Um, I I think it's with, uh, dependent on the player. I know yeah. Stardust will drink a lot of caffeine and he'll drink coffee, coke, whatever. Um, if I'm really jet lagged, day two of DreamHack and like I'm I'm like literally falling asleep. It's better to be caffeinated and jittery than falling asleep. But generally speaking, my my perfect mood is like being calm and like collected and like not tired but not hyped up not pumped up not with like a ton of adrenaline and i just play you know that most players play their best from home where they're really comfortable so you want to mimic that experience as much as possible and i think uh caffeine doesn't work well for me but then again if i'm really really tired then i'm gonna i'd rather be awake than fucking you know sleeping so it's dependent on what player okay. i guess uh, personally, my thoughts are, uh, I feel like it's a dumb thing to drink in the morning at the start of a tournament. If I feel like I might make it to day two, then I don't want to have it because it's going to fuck my sleeping uh, pattern or whatever. But it definitely makes you play better. Like, uh, there's it pushes my APM higher, and I feel like I play better when I drink it. I don't know if it's mental or if it's... That I could mean, be like, placebo. What? That could be like the placebo effect, right? Yeah, yeah, it could be the placebo effect. I don't know. I just feel like uh, as long as I'm like not nervous and I, I know what I've prepared, it just makes me think faster. I feel like, wow, this game is so slow. Like, let's go. Let's fucking build the next Nexus and shit. What about you, Kane? How do you feel about... I think Hug pretty much nailed it with uh, it's player dependent. Like, if that's what you're used to doing, you've done it before, go for it. But uh, if you've never had a Red Bull before, this is your first one. You might want to avoid that until after you're done playing. Mm -hmm. yeah. oh, okay. What about you, Rifkin? Do you drink Red Bull before casting? Does it affect I'd, you at all? I actually do, but it's only because I can't drink hot liquids, like whatever reason. So I can't drink coffee or anything to wake up. 
Uh, I will say though, the same thing that comes in, like at the end of like an eight hour cast, that, that Red Bull you drink at the start, you're crashing hard and your casting sucks for it. I can only imagine it's gotta be the same for players. We're like, okay, maybe it's good early on, but as Huck said, sometimes there's like twelve hour days. You know, you, you played first, but then you gotta wait for the finals type shit. And if you drink a Red Bull at the start of that day, oh you're feeling like shit like later on for sure. Mm-hmm. Alright, so a few questions on Reddit uh, or Twitter. Um, I don't know, like, I don't want to take a jab at the people that tweeted at me, but, like, if we've talked about something and then you tweet the question, it kind of feels redundant. But I believe in, in you guys that one day our audience will have very good questions on Twitter. So we'll start with, how do you keep yourself motivated to keep playing games? I quit playing because of the stress slash motivation. Huck, what's your, uh, what's your goal to? Um... You think of the money? The swimming, yeah. the swimming pool of money you had? No, no, I don't you make good back? money. I uh, yeah, I used, I used to make good money. So yes. money, like at this point, it's like it's a job. This is my job. I would rather do this than get a regular job. So I need to be successful at it or successful enough. And I don't know. I like it. I like traveling. I like seeing my friends. I like the lifestyle. So for right now, that suits me. And. Yeah. I, but if you had to give like it, a word of advice to someone who's not traveling, who's not making If you're not a pro gamer and you don't want to play and you're not having fun, then don't play. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what else to say. You're killing StarCraft, move, man! Yo, well, move to Switzerland true. and get a job at McDonald's. Apparently you make 20 bucks an hour according to Kane. Jesus. Yeah. Like, if you, <laughs> if you don't necessarily have to play the game non-stop to be a fan of StarCraft. You can still watch it. There's a ton of people that watch it but don't like playing it a lot. And, like, if it was me personally, I like playing LOL sometimes. I don't, if I get sick of it, I stop playing it. That's how I view it. Doesn't mean I don't keep up with the scene or watch, like, high tense matches or CSGO for that matter or whatever. It's just, you know, if you don't enjoy it, then don't play it. If you're trying to become a pro gamer, then you should view it as your job and fucking play anyways. But it's really where you're at. So, would you I say guess. that you're above the generic foreigner that. Doesn't take StarCraft too seriously since you treat it as a uh, job compared to us. I mean, I still fun. have my moments where it's like, I really don't want to play today. I really fucking am not happy with my performance. I'm not happy with uh, where the game's at and where my play's at specifically. So I'm going to take a two day break, three day break, whatever. But uh, at the same time, you got to be realistic and force yourself to play too sometimes. It just, it, it really depends. Like, yeah. I just, like I said, I've taken a few days' break after WCS, but I still have two weeks to prepare for Stockholm, and I still have three weeks to prepare for my round of eight patch, so, you know, it's it's okay to take breaks from from time to time, and it will help your overall play sometimes, too, to take breaks, so it just really depends your situation. I was, uh, I was, um, I was a little bit sad yesterday, and I was reading a lot of motivation pictures, and one came up that really uh, goes along with what Huck is saying. Discipline is cho just choosing between what you want now and what you want the most. Does it make sense? Swimming pool of money. Yes, alright. That's what Huck wants. Kane, how do you keep up the motivation? Uh, I mentioned this earlier, but motivation has literally never been a problem for me. Like, I, I think that breaks are important, and sometimes I have to force myself to take breaks, but, like, I've never, ever, ever felt like like sometimes when you lose a tournament you're like ah shit like should I be doing this as a job but it's never like I hate this game I don't want to play this game it's more like uh, am I making the right life choices <laughs> so that's, 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 <laughs> that's my problem that's pretty like, heavy dude that's yeah I know no no shit. you have no idea like some of the you shit that runs through my mind but yeah, yeah. but the thing I is think... like oh, go ahead Rifkin well here's the thing for you guys right and maybe this is something you all take it for granted when I went to MLG Anaheim, that was like the first time I've left the country, much less my own province, in like my life. So the the fact that it's like weighing up what's good versus bad, I think you guys also take for granted a lot of stuff like just traveling, having a team support you to go somewhere else, like to go across the world or across the country. Like that is the dream of some people like myself. Like, you know, you, we're sitting here making jokes about pools of money or being the best pro player in the world. Like then you got Joe Schmoes like me who are like, my dream is just to fucking travel, to go to these events, see you guys. Something that a lot of you guys might take for granted. So I, for motivation for you guys, I don't know. For me, it's just like I, wanna, I just want to see the world. But for you guys, like, I hear all this stuff, and it's like, yo, you guys have already got my dream, like, 
<laughs> keep dreaming. Actually, whatever. people ask me. People ask me sometimes why I travel so much, and this is one of the reasons I kind of went into pro gaming, and one of the reasons my parents really, really support me doing it, is because I do get to travel so much, and I do get to go to all these places that I other like. I would never ever be sitting here in the middle of Switzerland if it wasn't for StarCraft, you know. Yeah. So it is kind of a big, big deal for me to travel, and I definitely don't take that for granted. Yeah, but one thing, um, even like you were saying some pretty deep stuff about like, what am I doing with my life? One thing you have to consider is like, when you're comparing yourself to your peers, like people you used to go to high school or college with, uh, and they're like, they, you know, they got a kid or they got a house or shit like that. Thing is like, life is not a race. And so trying to compare yourself to others is like, as a pro gamer, it's always uh, oftentimes like depressing. Sure, you travel a lot, uh, but life is not a race. And so... It's important no, to, but, to keep that in mind. No, but protest here in Zergar. Ayo! <laughs> Just awful. <laughs> Come on, Rifkin. <laughs> You're killing it. All right. Um, uh, why are most of Ux alternate gamer tags always related to something sad? Uh... That was a while ago, but it was generally just because I was personally depressed and I felt uh, sad and whatever and then on top of it it's issues I've dealt closely with with personal friends family and stuff so it was more just like I don't know I just did it it's it's not like a huge concern and I'm in a happy place right now so is it because yeah. you didn't have a computer as a teenager and you didn't get to post those emo posts on Facebooks so that, that was your moment in StarCraft <laughs> depression sad okay I'm just gonna mute again <laughs> All right, last last <laughs> questions. Uh, since it's related to WCS, what are your thoughts on today WCS AM group Violet Scarlet Aegis Ero? And uh, for those watching this and not watching WCS, Aegis just beats Scarlet. But uh, outside of that, what are your no, thoughts? No, no, on? no, it's, so, it's still we're... going on. It's still oh, zero, it's zero. like one zero. Wow, Desro. Oh, zero, zero. I, no. I was, I, dude, I was Jeez. skimming through what you guys said in the chat, and I thought you it was specifically so... said, "Don't read anything in the group chat." I'm not gonna be able to read it. <laughs> but then I want to know if you're typing something. God damn it! All right, so uh, I can't. He's just Scarlet, playing really Scarlet, well. Scarlet, Lisa. Scar yeah. Um, Do you think I don't Scarlet, know, Scarlet, can do it? Scarlet? Scarlet's been kind of off the radar for a while. Her performance at IAM was really lackluster, so I don't know how good she is right now. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think she spends <laughs> other games playing. I don't know. I don't know. But I guess we'll kind of see after this group is done. I know Violet's been practicing a lot. He's pretty good. And when I say pretty good, I mean really good. Yeah. Uh, Aigu's, he's like underrated for sure. He's really strong. Um, doesn't matter that much. I think he plays mostly customs. Is and he, then, he's back in Australia, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh... Yeah, he, no? I know he was at the Root House. He was He's at the Root House. Yeah, yeah but for this, but... He left, he left, though. Oh, really? Yeah, he left and went back to Australia, I think, for another tournament, and now he's coming back to America. So he might be staying uh -huh. in after this, but I know he was in Australia before this. Petraeus, I can speak to this, was a really good practice partner for me, so hopefully he's... He's, he's, still, he's still in America. Oh, good. Okay. But I mean, he that's who, I guess could practice with. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. okay, okay, sorry. And I know that they're close because they're both, like, Australian slash New Zealand. They're in the same part of the world, pretty much, so they, they know each other. <laughs> it's right. true. Kane, about... I hate you. It's not even close. <laughs> what are your thoughts sure on that? Sure New Zealand and Australia are, like, Well, I mean, they're sort it's of like the US same. and Canada. No, yeah. no, no. Well, yes, but... Like, New Zealand is too small. Like, all they've ever done was host the so Lord of the Rings. No, Canada is the second most country. Like New Zealand, all they had going for themselves was <laughs> having Lord like, of the Rings. It's and then ever since mean? then they've Australia's, been irrelevant. Australia's population slash relevant uh, re relevance is comparable to New Zealand in the same way U.S. and Canada are. Canada is way smaller than the U.S. in population and culturally, and so is Australia to New Zealand. It's very comparable. Okay. Yeah, and uh, the whole criminal ratio, right? Because that's what they are, Australians. It's an I literally an island full of criminals. I'm just saying. No one say anything. Started. Make him feel more awkward. Just <laughs> welcome, <laughs> welcome to every day for me, hug. This is like <laughs> All right. Well, um, that kind of wraps up the show. It was a lot of fun. Uh, Chris, uh, what uh, can we see you? Where can we see you next? In, uh, Dreamhack Stockholm. Yes. Dreamhack Stockholm, and then round of eight, and hopefully 
Win that win win WCS America BlizzCon the dream. It's alive. That's it. Thanks for having me That's on the show. Luck, dude. Yeah, hey, and thanks. Don't say thanks for having me on the show. You're a co-host, motherfucker. But I'm still here, and thank you, Rifkin and Kane, for being on the show. I appreciate it, guys. You guys were Wait, good, so I don't good get a thanks now. You're a co-host. <laughs> yeah, right. you remember like when you you told us what you were up to at the start of the show? You fucked up then, Desro. It's just nobody's what? forgiving you since then. Wow. All right, Rifkin. Shoutouts, where can we hear you next? Um, well, shout out goes to Desro, Big Des for having a birthday today. Whoop whoop, happy birthday, Desro. Oh yeah, happy birthday. Right, thank you guys. Sorry. What are you uh, doing for your birthday? I'm gonna Dude, you must... Master you must really too special. Hot, you, had, you had Breaker make a Reddit thread for you. How special do you feel about that? <laughs> he, he messaged me at fucking 2 a.m. He's like, I need the karma. And it's a fucking, like, no-link post. He's not getting any karma. I don't get it, but... Nobody cared. But he, <laughs> he did it for you, Desro! Yeah, he yeah. did it for you! Yeah that, was, yeah, that was very nice. I've made it, man. It only took four years to have a Reddit thread. Yeah, that, I mean, that guy was... He did something at some point. Anyways, um... Where, as far as you can find me next, uh, you'll actually find me next with Kane, because we mentioned before, coming up in two days on the 18th on Thursday, uh, bright and early in the morning here if you're on the West Coast, we're going to have a show match with Kane versus Koss. We have a warm-up match of uh, Namshore versus Insane as well, so we got like a TVZ leading into TVZ, so you guys have a good couple of solid hours of StarCraft there. Um, other than that, uh, just actual shout-outs to chairsforgaming.com, sponsors Desert's channel, sponsors my channel, um, Canadian DX Racer, retailers, and all those wonderful things. But, uh, yeah, that's, that's it. Thanks for having me on. Again, didn't expect to be back, but... Uh, you know, you're, 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 you're a nice guest. Uh, it's, it's nice to have you. Thank you again. Uh, Kane, your shout-outs. Uh, shout-out to you and Huck for having me on the show, I suppose. Uh, shout out to my insanity for hosting me at their wonderful Switzerland house. Yeah. And a uh, big shout out to our sponsors, Logitech, Bison, or Bison, depending on how you want to pronounce it. Uh, Esports clothing. I don't know if they sponsor us, but we use them. <laughs> I'm gonna get yelled at for that. I think, unless <laughs> nobody heard me. Um, and yeah, Just big, whisper. <laughs> big thank you and big happy birthday to you, Desro. Thanks, dude. And where can we see you next? Uh, Showmatch versus Cass. You can see me following him on the 18th, I think it is. Yes, yes. What about DreamHack? Oh yeah, DreamHacks.com I'll be going to as well. Alright, so any Swedish fan, go give a hug to Kane. He's the nicest Only if you're guy. a girl. Only if you're a girl. Swedish girl. That's, that's not nice. That's and also, no, it's a good, it's good ambition is what it is. I mean, seriously. Yeah. Swedish women are fucking gorgeous. Yes. Also... If you're Scandinavian at all, just come say hi. <laughs> Don't touch me. Don't touch me, but say hi. <laughs> and if you get to party with Kane, be careful. He's a party animal. But uh, outside of that, yeah. Uh, so that kind of wraps up the show. Uh, last words from me. Uh, I'll be streaming some team games if you want to stick around, even though there's WCSNA. Thanks to my guests. Uh, we had a lot of fun. Uh, we'll be back next week with more talk of tournaments and subjects. And if there's anything you want us to talk about, uh, you know, a strategy segment or some tournaments, just tweet at me throughout the week. I keep track of everything. And uh, I build the show from the ground up uh, around Sunday and sometimes two hours before the show. Uh, so, yeah, shout out to my sponsor, Cheers for Gaming, Asus, and Corsair. Thank you again for watching the show. And uh, next week, try to leave questions on the Reddit thread. Uh, it really helps, uh, you know, with visibility and stuff. And so uh, that's always appreciated when you guys do. Uh, so thank you, everyone, for being on the show. And see you guys later.